<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, now Thank you crying. so much. Now you're I think crying. we should leave now. Yeah, that that's definitely a, that's about all downhill from here. For sure. <laughs> How many of you were here last time? <laughs> wow. Cool. That's incredible. We're um, going to say all the exact same stuff, so you might okay. not learn anything. <laughs> nothing has happened. No, nothing's then. happened. Um, hi, May. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for asking me to do this. Uh, uh, you're welcome. I'm really excited. <laughs> it's so strange to be here and be, I just feel so lucky and honored. I mean, it's wow. Lauren Graham. Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love all you so dearly. Thank you so much for coming. Same. It's just really a treat to get such a nice um, response. And this microphone is very loud. And, um, and I couldn't be more happy to be here with my bestie, Mae Whitman. Correct. We are indeed BFFs. <laughs> it's the truth. It's true. Rumors are true. Um, um, I'm really excited to be here. I have questions, personally. I mean, I, well, the one thing I do want to start with is this book because look how beautiful it is, first of all, the colors. <laughs> Can you believe these spring colors? Perfect in time for spring. Um, and just kind of tell me like, how this came about. This <laughs> Backstage, May was go. worried about what to ask, and I said, just ask me how things came about. And so now I think so, <laughs> yeah. she, she's just going to be, there's going to be a lot of how things Every came single about. question is going to be how did yeah. that come about. Well, <laughs> Get ready. so is this, does this, is it sound OK? Yeah. OK. Um, okay, so, so I, and this is in the book, but my father called me and said, um, congratulations, you're giving the Langley High School graduation speech. And I was like, did I want to do that? <laughs> I, I don't remember. He, he, he said it like it was a big, you know, like I, like I applied for you it. You won the and prize. Like I won, yeah. and I got it. <laughs> And I was like, but dad, I haven't been to high school, you know, I haven't even been to my high school in very many years. And I had a little sister who graduated from there. I wasn't asked to give the speech that year. And so I was like, why? And, and he was like, oh, but it's my friend Bill, who I play tennis with. And oh, tennis Bill. I mean, <laughs> you know, Bill. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and he said, his granddaughter is um, graduating. So congratulations. That's literally how I was asked to give the graduation <laughs> speech at my high school. And it is an extremely challenging um, effort to try to think about where you were at that time and, and what you could possibly say to right. um, anyone, and so I worked very hard on trying to think of positive, hopeful, helpful things to say, and then my publisher said, oh, we'd really like to publish it, and I said, great, it's done, it's already written, it'll be my first thing I've ever turned in on time, <laughs> and, and then they said, but can you change the entire thing um, to, like, and I was like, wait, what? So then it became something else, it, because my speech to my high school was quite specific to my experience in my high school, and, and they wanted something that spoke to a broader base of people. And, and so that's this, this little book, and, and uh, it's not you know, the length of the last book or anything, it's just meant as like a, it's an alternative to Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's a great tagline. I believe that's on the book. <laughs> I mean, I have um, to say, for me, it was excellent to read this book because, I mean, I'm lucky enough that when I have stresses and pain and fear, I can text you and I get the wealth of knowledge directly for me. But I really, honestly, feel, feel like reading this, it felt like things that you had shared with me and, and positive messages to me that actually really genuinely I apply all the time to real life situations. So I think it's really cool that you were able to sort of give that to everyone and- Well, you know. that's very nice. I mean, honestly, once you start down, what, oh, I, I mean- <laughs> Oh my God. Did I just like poo on your compliment? <laughs> I don't know, I can't tell. I thought it was that's going nice. so well. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just gonna go. You may just says like the nicest thing and I'm like, I can't hear like, the, like, I, no, don't be positive. <laughs> I, um, it, 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 it was very humbling and, and I keep thinking of more things I would like to say. I, I might do a graduation book a year um, because... Well, it, times but, are changing so much these yes. days with kids and school and technology and 
There's, it's a well, and we, I have a teen in, in my life, and I see, you know, he's 16 now, and I see what he's facing, what he's going through, and just the incredible uh, work that, you know, the, the teens from Florida did this year, and, um, you know, yeah. Hey. So, and um, the title came from my editor, Jen E. Smith. Jen? <laughs> <laughs> Jen loves to be pointed out in the crowd. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it occurred as a result of um, when I went through the point I kept trying to make over and over was there are all these big life moments that we feel pressured to um, think have to be some certain way. And I feel like graduation is one of those times where you are taking stock, you're sort of, you've finished something and you're at the beginning of something else. You know, these, these moments that are supposed to feel like something, and for me anyway, hardly any of them did. I mean, I talk about this in the book, but all I really remember about my high school graduation day was thinking like, you know, what party was I gonna get invited to and like <laughs> whose brother was gonna buy us wine coolers, you know? <laughs> and, and I was just so overwhelmed and sort of in shock, you know? And, and that's been my experience in so many big life moments, right. you know, I like um, I, on, in the car on the way to the Golden Globes the year I was nominated, um, whoever, I, I was in the car with like a, a work person who was like screaming on the, yelling on, well, yelling, screaming doesn't sound nice. He, he was um, loudly having pontificating. a, having a sure. work conversation. It just was one of those moments where I was like, I don't know what is supposed to be happening right now, but I don't think this is my <laughs> I dream scenario yeah. of like, you know, it just felt so strange and I was kind of dating a guy who then ignored me. Like that's all the things I thought about yeah. was, was all the life things, mm -hmm. not the like, this is a big day and you know, I'm, I, I should feel proud. It, it, yeah. it just never kind of turns out that way. I feel like I had that when I was like a child actor. People always ask me like, what was it like working with, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. I, I remember things like, he, George Clooney bought me chicken nuggets once. It was yeah. really cool. But there's like no real, you know, it's all like flashes of little yes. random life stuff that kind of you put these take memories it in. together. Yeah. And, and I think on, a, on, a, on those big, you know, it's graduation or, uh, any kind of uh, big moment, it, it, you can't always uh, you can't always understand it all at the at the time. But you yeah. like me better than Sandra Bullock, though, right? I, who's Sandra Bullock? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> she played your mom a long time. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, I could also throw the question in your face: Who's your favorite TV daughter? I have to go. Do ya? <laughs> Yeah, let's save it for the car ride home. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about this in the car. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about like writing, just like what's yeah. that like for you and what kind of has made you want to be a writer and how is it different from acting and just kind of in general what your writing process is. Well, part of, um, part of starting to write was a real desire to be in charge of my own story. And that just evolved out of years and years of, of being an actor and um, having a relationship to the material. N normally, both on Parenthood and on Gilmore Girls, there was wonderful material to, to work with, but I st the way I read scripts now is almost um, in opposition to them, I started to notice, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would read something and I'd be like, God, I really wish she said this. Mm -hmm. I really wish this happened. I really wish, like I started sort of having that relationship to a lot of what I read. And, you know, I was a reader from very young age. Um, reading and books were a big deal in my house. It was, it was a way I, I just escaped. It was a way I used my imagination. You know, my father w was one of those parents who would say like, You'd ask a question, he'd be like, look it up. There's a book on that. Look it up. You can learn the word. Hi, Gary. I <laughs> saw you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I just grew up with that as like, um, that's the solution. If you have a question, you, you write a book, or you read a book about it. And, and, and it just, I've talked about this before, but there was a moment on, in the trailer in, at Parenthood where I just had a, uh, finally all of, <laughs> 
the um, experiences I had caught up with me almost in a moment um, where I suddenly thought, God, I was like a, I had three jobs and I was wait, waiting tables and I was tutoring and I was doing all this stuff and I was just thinking, will I ever get out of this grind? Will I ever be able to do the thing I dream of doing? And here I am doing it. I've been doing it for a long time. And that connection to who that person was who had the balls to, <laughs> to have that dream. And th I, I just thought, what was I thinking? I was like crazy, you know? And, and that's kind of where the first book came from. I started thinking about who was that person and, and you know, it's me, but not. It was right. the character of who, who is that and what, what perspective can I bring to it now, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I just started writing. And since then, I have learned so much and have had um, a bunch of, you know, we adapted The Royal We, mm -hmm. um, I'm adapting Jen, uh, one of Jen Smith's books. I have written, written pilots. I've written a couple pilots for Ellen DeGeneres' company. I've just had all these, you know, um, cool opportunities and, um, and, and I feel I have more to learn, but I, I'm really finding uh, a lot of satisfaction in, in writing and, and it's much harder to do than, than acting, but you know, there's a, there's a strange, um, when you've had two good TV shows, it's really hard to find a third. And, and um, so it gives me some creative outlet and it gives me a way to express myself while I, try to find whatever, you know, the next acting job is. And I mean, that's kind of the dream. I mean, especially for me to just, you know, piggyback on you because it, there's, first of all, there's really no one who knows me better. And um, I think it's true when you get to, because at least personally for me, parenthood was such an intimate experience and we really, so much of ourselves was mm -hmm. in that show and we were really able to be present and be there with each other. And I just love the concept now that I think it's kind of a double-edged sword where there is this world where you really can create things for yourself and for people around you and you can express, you can tell your own story. It's just sort of up to you to do it. And mm -hmm. I feel, you know, so lucky that we've gotten it. That's like my dream is that we have like a little office with like an old timey detective, our names on the door and we just like, <laughs> you know, with a fan and a typewriter and they're like, like a manual yeah. typewriter <laughs> clacking yeah. away. And like the hat yeah. and the white Hats. beater and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my dream. And we just like think of stuff and we work on things together so I mean well and it is a little bit what we do I mean we I bounce every idea I have off of you in a way the person I'm writing for I'm much more comfortable writing for you you know in your age than I am myself for some reason and um, what we've found is some some of what we like is just not in fashion right now like Boy is a romantic comedy, like not an easy sell. And, and uh, it's strange to me because I want something soothing mm -hmm. as an antidote to what is so unsoothing right now <laughs> in yeah. the world. And I just want happy, uh, positive stories, romance. And, and, you know, sometimes we've gone to pitch these things and they're like, yeah, unless there's like a killer and a vampire. Yeah. And a <laughs> We are not interested. And I'm like, how many more stressful TV shows can we possibly yeah. come up with? Like, it's time travel and it's shooting. And I can't, I just am not interested. And, um, and but it's hard to, and it's the thing about Gilmore Girls that I still found, even when we did the second time around, people would underestimate how powerful mm -hmm. the happiness of it was, you yeah. know, and, and how much people, responded to it mm -hmm. partially because of that. It's a happy world. It's a happy relationship. Yes, there are challenges, but you know, it's there there will always be dancing girls in mm -hmm. at Miss Patty's and fairy lights and the gazebo. Yeah. And like there's something about that that I really um have seen, you know, that is part of the joy that that show brought to people. It's it's a safe world mm -hmm. and um, and I still think there's a bit of, oh, but that's for girls, or oh, that's for teens, or oh, you know, that's not, it, 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 it almost, because of that, it, it 
somehow uh, contradicted the intelligence of the script almost. Right. Uh, and um, and I just think that's a that's a shame because I I think you know, that kind of positivity is why the show is kind yeah. of stuck around. But I think you know? the second that anyone watches it, I mean, you can watch it for five minutes and, and just see that, yes, the world is so soothing and wonderful and it is positive and happy, but it's so intelligent. I mean, the writing is just so snappy and so intelligent. Thank you. And brilliantly done. Um, I wish Amy was here. I mean, um, in, in, Amy's in France doing her... Um, doing Mrs. Maisel, um, but, yay, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, she's a really pr special yeah. talent, and, and um, anyway. I mean, even, I, you know, I, again, and really, my, my father, who is like Lauren's biggest fan, he's like <laughs> literally always texting me like, I watched an old episode of, you know, Late Night with Lauren on it, and she is just so, I'm like, Dad, don't Google old episodes <laughs> oh of things God. with Lauren in it. <laughs> This is my best friend, just relax. <laughs> but really, like, you know, he watched all of Gilmore Girls and the new one, and he was, like, just blown away by how wonderful it is. And it's true. It's the joy of positivity. I mean, it's, you know, like you were saying, the, the world is in such a stressful place right now that I think everybody is feeling really run down and overwhelmed, and it's so helpful to, it's almost like meditation in a way. You take your brain out of that situation so that when you come back to it, you have a new perspective and you're feeling better yourself, you know, and you can sort of apply yourself in the real world better. But did you find, like, writing the book, talking as fast as I can, I mean, that must have been so different because before that, you'd written Someday, Someday, Maybe. Well, everything has been different. I'm, 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 I'm anxious to, or now I've started to... Uh, work in a format I've worked in before. It's just happened that the first thing that kind of came to me was fiction, and then the second one was this book of essays, and then I'm, w I wrote a one-hour script, and then I wrote a half-hour script, and I was like, wow, I'd really like to just do one of these twice so that I could <laughs> learn, apply what, I, what I've learned. Um, I really enjoyed, in terms of what was f more f the most fun, to write the essays was really fun, and and um, it is still the way uh, things come to me in terms of I think of the chapter titles I first. <laughs> um, what's the one we came up with today? The uh, well, I mean, no, the which one? I mean, there's so many. Do you want to spoil them? It's going to be in the sure, next book. Sure, okay. I mean. They won't remember. There's really the best ones. BYO pillowcase. BYO pillowcase. <laughs> and I went. <laughs> I went to um, a <laughs> hotel, the, the, some of these are, it's sort of variations of, of um, how I am thinking about aging or, you know, um, aging. I'm trying to make it some other thing, but it's really aging. Um, <laughs> <laughs> aging or Either something more attractive <laughs> than that. But, uh, but, you know, I went to this hotel and I, um, I got a rash from whatever they washed the sheets in, and I was like, oh my God, am I that person now? I'm gonna have to bring my own sheets and pillowcases <laughs> to like hotels because like I'm so sensitive, it's to my skin, yeah. I couldn't, and I was like, oh God. So anyway, uh, that was one. But there was something else we were talking about. I mean, we our, did it. Our podcast? Our, well, this is, yeah. The, I've been trying to convince Lauren to do a podcast with me for like months. <laughs> I mean, what could possibly be better than this for hours? <laughs> it came as a joke because literally every single one of our friends has a podcast. And, and I'm like, ugh, God, yeah. we got to go beyond. I just did Dax's podcast. He's yeah. trying to get you to come. It's fantastic. It's He's bet. wonderful. He's also my neighbor. It couldn't have been easier. I just like walked over to his house. Um, but it's as I think it's Kevin Pollack who said podcasts are the new jury duty. Like, you don't really feel like it, but you like gotta do it because it's your buddy. And I, but so we started kidding about what would we do if we had a, a podcast, and we can't stop talking about it. I know, <laughs> even though it doesn't like exist. Our non-existent podcast that I'm gonna insist we record right when we get home. But. And Jeff. Uh, May's dad, who is my other boyfriend, is um, <laughs> is a sound engineer. So I it's mean, like we have on. to do it. He's gonna make but us sound. Can work. we really? I mean, what is there? What more can we say? I mean, about I could that do this. Hasn't been said? All we do is this for I hours know. every day. I don't understand the question. <laughs> well, can we let everyone else in on the fun? I mean, well, we have a book club as a part of our we podcast. We have a book club as part of our podcast. Yeah, that and, doesn't exist. Well, I mean, it's sort of to me based a little bit on if you read Talk as fast as I can. There's a chapter. My personal 
personal favorite chapter about Old Lady Jackson, mm -hmm. which is the character <laughs> that Lauren created so that it, which is sort of the, the more conservative uh, version that is sort of the uncool version who gets upset whenever Miles and I get tattoos or piercings Ugh. or do they anything. They have too many. <laughs> um, I created this character I wrote about in my book because I created this character because I found myself <laughs> t t talking to May and Miles uh, as if I was some like grumpy parent, <laughs> and and I was like, wow, I I, uh, I I'm just really not cool anymore. I gotta, and so I kind of separated myself, and I was she's like, like it's I was me. like, it's I created this character, like she's a stick in the mud, but I'm still fun, <laughs> and and but. So our podcast would have a section about like things that I com complain about. Yeah, Old Lady Jackson. Uh, but corner. it's not me, it's Old Lady yeah, Jackson. Yeah, of course, yeah. it's not you. She's You're so, so hip. Yeah, you exactly. would love it if I got right. more tattoos and did crazy stuff all the time. That's... No more tattoos. Look. <laughs> Can you believe it? I mean, enough already. <laughs> because they're of like sheep and circles and stuff. <laughs> I mean, can you guys believe? Anyway, tune in to our podcast for more. Wait, show them the as one. What's the this man? The this mushroom man. man? Mushroom Guys, man. it's really complicated, okay? It doesn't even... But Miles and I have matching ones, okay? Miles that doesn't is make my it any better. Everything. Show them the sheep and the circle. You can't see it. It's too... <laughs> Guys, it's just a sheep <laughs> and a circle. They all have very significant meanings. Because it looks like... Meanings. So, first of all, you're a beautiful girl. You Here we go. are fantastic. But it looks like... <laughs> it looks like some... It looks like she took a pen and just like... Did, it's like when you're like a kid uh, and you like... It's called a prison like, you know. tattoo and it's cool. <laughs> what? Hello. Is that what it's called? It's stick and poke. I mean, what do I have to teach you everything? Ew. This is literally a podcast. <laughs> People have been doing it for centuries. It's a ceremonial. But this is exactly my issue with it. It looks like something you did yourself, and now you're telling me you basically did. Okay, first of all, <laughs> first of all, only a couple of them were done by people that are not Ew. tattoo artists. It's a very, <laughs> listen, you know what? I'm gonna post later on the internet some pictures of my tattoos and you can tell me if they're cool or not cool. And Obviously we'll have a big they're cool. Poll Obviously and we'll see they're what's cool. happening there. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I'm sure my parents are like, yes, no more tattoos watching this live stream right now. I'm so excited about it. But uh -uh. I mean, I do a little bit want to talk about like parenthood and yeah. just the experience Let's talk about of parenthood. filming it, right? I mean, so I just, I, one of my first memories of Lauren is, you know, she was like the coolest ever. And we, we were on a huge cast and I was probably, I think like 21 when we started. I think I, think I was okay. 21. And I remember I had just no, like no clue what's going on. I have on. no clue. I was, I remember I, we had only been working together for a few months. And I remember I was talking to you really early on, like probably within the first week or two of filming with you. And I told you that I love to cook, but I had no like nice pans of any kind. And I was like, oh, my friggin' pan got burned in the thing because it's a piece of shit. Like it was like a whole thing. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that, but anyway. You can say it. Okay. And then, and then I remember like four months later, it was Christmas and you gave me like the most beautiful La Creuset skillet that I still is the only nice pan I have. <laughs> but like, I was like, who is this that she remembered? And within the first week of us meeting, you were so considerate that you like remembered this tossed off comment and I was immediately like, wow, I love her. Like, and it really like <laughs> took off from there. I mean, so generous, so kind. I, I wanted to start your Le Creuset collection. You did. It's and an I, important it's, collection. You just, it's still starting. It hasn't, <laughs> hasn't continued right there at the beginning. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, I just remember, you know, I came to the cast late and um, normally even, uh, even if you weren't auditioning, they would bring you in, you'd meet, you'd have a chemistry, you'd have lunch, you'd have something. And um, we didn't have any of that. And I just can remember the first day we all met and it was really an instant feeling yeah. of, of family. Don't make me cry. Yeah, it was really family. This is how it happens, folks. And um, we, we really took our family seriously and, and really um, it's, it continues. I mean, I'll say. yeah. I, it's one of, really one of the only experiences where I feel like I've become close with someone and then I actually, when, when, even when the show ended, I was sad, but it didn't affect me in the way I knew that I was gonna actually see more of you guys outside mm -hmm. of work and that's really continued. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're like everyday, boring, like banal, go to the DMV partners. Like we yeah. really do like the stupidest everyday stuff yeah. together. And I mean, we really formed such a tight bond. And I think, you know, a, lot, a big part of that too was we were able to do some improv on the show. And I think that was such a special feeling. And you know, people always say to us like, 
oh, they're, you guys were always crying so much and the crying. And I'm like, yeah, because we would literally have rehearsals where we'd sort of go in and say, what is this scene? What's, what do we need to hit? What are the points of this? And then you, we would go in and, you know, you're working with somebody like Lauren Graham and I would just go in there and the second those baby blues water up, I mean, what am I going to do? <laughs> I lose my mind. You know, it's... It's, it's also very funny to me, um, you know, I had a real issue with um, emotional scenes before that show. Wow. I am a very verbal person. Gilmore Girls was perfect for me in that time because it has and had a an almost theatrical language to it, which I loved, and it and it wasn't so. It was so much about talking and and uh, verbal communication, and way less about behavioral sort of you know close-ups and moments and stuff. And and uh, I had had I issues in work before when I was supposed to cry on cue, and it always gave me such a panic as a and made me feel like. Um, you know, as an actor that I was really blocked, and it just flew out the window on Parenthood. I, 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 and I don't know if it's the time of life, you guys, the, the, the subject matter, the mm -hmm. scenes, I mean, it, it, was, um, it was really an incredible experience, and now This Is Us continues <laughs> where we left off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have fun at the Emmys. We were, it up, yeah, we were doing a family show too, <laughs> but no. It's all right. We, you know, we paved the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I like to think it's an extension of our family. I'm still on NBC. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Bob. Love this stuff. Great show. Really the best, the best show. Love it. Uh. Just happy to be here. Bob. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was all those things, though. But really, it's like, I think another thing is we really were able to bring, I mean, again, that show was not about the, anything enormous. It was not explosions or mm -hmm. guns or any of this crazy stuff that is so extreme. And yet, to me, it felt like the most extreme job I've ever had because mm -hmm. it was very honest. And it was, we really took these people's lives seriously. And I think especially when you are able to improvise and especially when you're, there literally was not a bad egg in the group. Like everyone loved each other so much and mm -hmm. in such a real way that I feel like we really fell in love with the characters and we really wanted their stories to be told right. And I, I just feel like we've really felt like family with our characters and with each other. And I think it just made it made the experience so... The experience was important. incredible, and old lady Jackson used to say to the kids, yep. um, you, you'll never have another one like this. It's true. Like, we were like, yeah, we'd be yeah, done yeah. by like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, no, nah, this is not normal. And, and we blew you off, and now you're now so right. You. Now look I know. at me. <laughs> now she like calls me from Good Girls. She's like, it's 2 in the morning. I mean, what is happening? And I'm like, that's just normal filming. <laughs> like, I'm smug about it. I don't know why. It is. It's Although funny. I will say, in Parenthood, I had my first experience where... I, at times, felt frustrated within the world of my character, mm -hmm. where I realized I had never played, you know, you play these characters over years, right. and, and it would frustrate me when, um, first of all, when Sarah would start a new career and then drop it, where'd the playwriting go? <laughs> and... <laughs> You had one <laughs> successful play. You put I the had play one on it. Successful and play, and then on. I gave it all up. I don't know. <laughs> She's and a jack of all trades. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I kind of wanted to do one or the other. Like I, I thought when I first started, I thought, okay, this is a story about someone who's really um, has not been able to uh, get what she wanted, and I was really intrigued by that. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love the you don't want to always play a hero. You know, right. I liked the idea, especially that it, it was another single mom, but to me it was so different because I really thought we were going to see her struggle, and then that's not really the show we were doing. The show we were doing was something, you know, more um, hopeful, and mm -hmm. so we'd get these little wins, and uh, but I, I, could, I, I couldn't get a handle on it in the same way. Do you know? Like, yeah. I, I, I couldn't quite... Um, I didn't want it be, to be defined by what relationship she was totally. in, but that's, you know, you kind of, that's TV a little right. bit. You know, people fall in love with, uh, you know, a couplehood, or they root for people to be together. And I, I have a question. Are you... Yes, uh, why are you talking are to you your team, thing? Like no, this is an important question. <laughs> are you team Sear or team <laughs> Hank? Rizzoli. That's little. There was a big triangle going on in Parenthood that was with Jason Ritter and Ray Romano, and Jason still gets really upset whenever we talk about it. So I hope he's not watching. 
Um, I, of course, will never answer that question. I know. Um, it's the TV daughter question all over again. I will just say, I really fell in love. I mean, I am in love with Jason Ritter. I'm in love with Ray Romano. I, I loved, uh, I loved how how relentlessly hard on himself Ray always was. Mm -hmm. And and because it's really true. It's not it's not an act. You know, he's like, ah, I don't know. I, I, I gotta, you know. <laughs> you know. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I don't it's know. okay. I it seem weird yeah. to you. It's just weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just loved him. And I like, he worked so hard and he was, he was really incredible. He was incredible. And he you know, he's just one of those artists who he can't rest on what he's done already, you know, and, and he was always so helpful to comics starting out and he would to go do, you know, someone's, a brand new show, you know, to kind of be supportive. And as a, uh, one of my first jobs out of college was a, as a cocktail waitress at the Improv Comedy Club. Um, and I saw I saw Ray go on like wow. right before he kind of got brought out to Hollywood. And every time I s tell him that, I say, you know, I was the waitress when you were there. And he goes, did I hit on you? <laughs> <laughs> Which, no, he didn't. And oh I, I'm, I'm like, don't do you not remember? We already had this conversation. And no, you didn't. But um, so that was really cool, you know, yeah. just to see someone who I'd seen right kind of, you know, uh, start starting out and and. Um, so I really, I really love. But them Jason both. Ritter is in the chain gang, which is a serious thing for so us. So if you're a member of our family, you have, we have a chain. Yeah. And and it has a charm. Correct. Which they don't make anymore. So right. Jason doesn't have a charm. Jason doesn't have a charm because they only <laughs> he does literally have a chain. there were like three left yeah. in the world. And Miles and I found this charm, which yeah. was it's a little tiny bucket of champagne, which felt appropriate. And uh, and literally, yeah, Jason doesn't, but he has the chain. That's yeah, plenty. he has the chain. Yeah, it's Ray, more Ray doesn't have a chain. Don't thought. tell him. Yeah, oh God, <laughs> I hope he's not watching this. But yeah, it it was really the, it was the most special experience. It was a really special experience. Also, I had never had the. Um, experience of knowing a show was ending and being able to <laughs> being able to um, to give Just it a send off, you know yeah. and 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 that was that was a very different feeling than yeah. um, I mean I I still can't believe that Gilmore Girls on Netflix happened it was th thank you <laughs> no I tried my best to write about it um, in talking as fast as I can. I, I can't do it justice. I, I just will never be able to explain what every day felt like. It was an incredible gift to, after all that time, to be able to go back to something I loved so much and had missed so much and be in it in a way that I couldn't possibly have done at the beginning and have the relationship I then had with Amy, you know, who who really, after all those years, like, treated me like a peer and we just all did it together and it was, I, I probably cried every day and, yeah. and, 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 it, and it was just exhilarating. It was, it was the best feeling I'll, I probably ever have as yeah. an actor and and there's an incredible depression that comes with that <laughs> because I read things now and I'm like Ugh, what am I I'm gonna go do this now like yeah. after after I did that like you know it's it's almost depressing it's like it's like I got to do um and even if it whatever the outcome you know the experience was it, it just beyond words yeah. and and that you that I got to have that once mm -hmm. is incredible and and it's really a you know coming back to graduation or big moments or something it's in, it's so hard to have a big moment and be in it Absolutely. at the same time and I almost think you it has to be a do-over it mm -hmm. has to be a second time or you know uh, uh, somehow where you realize how valuable and how rare the person you're with or the job you have or the day you're having, you know, I and I got to, to have that feeling. And you got to give it a proper, I mean, albeit who knows if it's forever, but a real, yeah. you think? I, you don't know? Oh, no, I, oh. no. I'm trying, guys, I'm I, trying. I, I'm trying to get some info for you here. I don't see, uh, it's, it, <laughs> I feel very satisfied. 
um, I think had it be, had it been like Fuller House, where they're like, okay, keep going, you know, that would have been something different. Yeah. It it be, be, I, what I by which I mean they did one season and then they immediately invited them back to mm -hmm. do another one. This this always felt like more of a of a special, like a limited series. Yeah. You know, it didn't feel to me like. Yeah, the format was the format so different. Was so was that, did it feel different as you were filming it? Um, I mean, the scripts were always like. 40 pages too long yeah. for the format, you know, um, and, and, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be here for seven hours. I'm like, oh God. I hope you brought your sleeping bags because yeah. we're... <laughs> uh. um, <laughs> it, the scripts were incredibly long. It felt, it felt like the same show. It felt like what she always wanted to do, you know. It felt like it, there's... Some writers really struggle with, you know, filling up the pages. Amy Palladino is not one of those yeah. writers. And, and all she kept saying to me, you know, when, before I'd even read anything, she was like, note cards, so many note cards. She had, <laughs> she had whole storylines that she cut for time. That's how she works, you know. And, and also, she, these characters are so alive for her, and we were all that excited to, mm -hmm. what if this and what if that? And, you know, where, where, where else can we take them, kind of? Um, but I do think that's probably where where it This ends. is where we leave you. This is where I, I leave do you. have a question about I just love I mean, to me one of the most amazing things I've ever seen is the scene in fall. And I just of the fall episode of Gilmore Girls, um, the phone call that you have. And I really I mean, I, the things that you do on that show anyway, like I really can barely get out of bed in the morning and remember to do like anything and I just don't, already you have to be so sharp and present and I just felt like, and I remember, you know, having dinner with you in the days leading up to that and just sort of talking about what that, and you were, you know, oddly zen about it and I just, I wonder what your process was and with that scene and sort of what it meant to you and what it was like. So, um, during the original show, I kept saying to Amy, um, you know, this show is known now for the language and for these lengthy speeches. We should do the longest speech that's ever been done. Like, <laughs> that would be so the show, you know, just one long monologue. And she would always sort of be like, uh-huh, okay. And like, she was just like, what? And so when we came back to do the Netflix, she kept saying, remember that thing you used to always say about about doing a really, you know, just doing a really long speech. She said, I think I found a place where it would really make sense. Um, but, you know, we started filming. I hadn't read anything. She didn't have it all written. And, and, um, and then, and I wrote about this, but then for the longest time, she, she kept saying, you know, there's this thing in fall that I, I hope you really respond to. And I was so scared to read it. I was so scared to read that episode. Mm -hmm. I was so scared to read the end, you know. And <laughs> I was so um, not ready to let it go, I think, you know. And, and so I avoided it for the longest time. And because how they did the back lot, we had to do it in order of seasons because you can't clean up all that snow and you know do a different scene the next day. So, so we did fall. It was one of the, my last days of work and the script was one of, I, we were months into shooting and she'd be like, did you, did you read fall yet? And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't read it, I can't read it. <laughs> and I sat down one day and I read it and I just cried through the whole thing. And, um, and then I got to that speech that, still obviously is very upsetting um, <laughs> that, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just, it was such a strange combination of a piece of material tied to a person I love and lost. And, and it felt to me like it's really a tribute to him. You know, it's, it's sort of, I, I want to, it's, it's, it gets all mixed up, but I want to honor his memory somehow, you know? And that's what I feel like was thematically an undercurrent of really the whole show, you know? And, and, and the, what we all connect to is, you know, losing somebody, loving somebody, it's just so human and so relatable. And so that day, um, 
well, first of all, I didn't want to have to call for line. I didn't want to have to do a bunch of takes. Um, I didn't want to beat it to death. And so I did something I hadn't really ever done before, which is I just recorded myself very flat, like not acting, but just the words. And I would play it in the, in the car just so it was so in my body that I wouldn't have to be like acting or like, you know, looking for it or whatever. And, and then we just got to the day and, um, and they were like, okay, so it's one shot, which we do a lot on the show. Um, and we did a lot back in the old days. You know, most scenes in television, it's like two pages, three pages. We'd have 11 page scenes that we were doing. Everybody had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. the, camera operator, the lines, the background, the everything, it became these massive choreographed, you know, um, sort of uh, collaborations and uh, they take a long time. And, and so this was outside and you have to worry about the sun and where it is. And, and um, so anyway, yeah, we just, you know, we just ended up doing it just really two, maybe two times. And, um, and, and I just felt, happy with it. I felt, you know, I felt, because the worry always when you jack yourself up <laughs> and want something to be mm -hmm. s something is that, you know, you can get there and be like, oh, I'm dead inside. Uh-oh. Yeah. Like, you know, you can get there and just be like, oh, my uh, brain and heart have left the building. <laughs> I, and, and there's real, a real fear with that. You kind of, you know, you're your own instrument and you're not yeah. always like ready to play totally. or whatever. And sometimes you have to fake it and sometimes you have to manufacture or whatever. And, um, and so I did feel like, and this is really actressy, but, um, you know, it also to me was um, something about the show, about that Netflix show, um, was about my mom for me. Um, God. Can't reach and, um, you across the table. I'm like, um, <laughs> Amber, <laughs> Amber. Um, <laughs> and uh, and a, a loss that I really hadn't processed. I mean, it happened during, you know, the, the last year, the second to last year of the first Gilmore Girls. And, uh, you know, my mom passed and I couldn't be there. And, and I just sort of like kept going. And, and so really for me personally, that was a big piece of, of this second show is I just felt her presence and I felt, um, I felt that loss in a, in a way through the character's, you know, story. Stop crying. I can't stop crying. <laughs> you're, listen to what you're saying. I'm we supposed to cry? Well, I'm crying. You don't have any tissues. This is what happened. Okay, listen, <laughs> I have, we have to get away from this now because this is terrible. Let's I think look at we our have questions. to look at our questions because Can I look at some of them? Yeah, you, you want half the stack? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go first? Uh, sure. How, hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. I feel like okay, I'm struggling. Go ahead. Uh, okay, Elise from Bon Appetit magazine. Delicious. Oh. <laughs> Recipe tips? Lauren. <laughs> you wish. Lauren. Yes. What's your favorite name? <laughs> yeah! Wow! Thank you. <laughs> I'll take one too. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Lauren, what's your favorite <laughs> neighborhood <laughs> restaurant in Virginia? Why do you love it and what do you order? Oh, wow. First of all, I never really eat out in Virginia. Interesting. <laughs> My dad, when, especially when it was just the two of us, we ate out all the time. And, um, and it's, but it's like places that probably don't exist anymore. I mean, it's, uh, it's like Clyde's in Georgetown. It's like where my father goes every yeah. single day. Yeah, it's good. Okay. What do I order and why? Wait, this is not a good enough answer for Bon Appetit magazine. Yeah. I order the. This is not exactly cover story material. It's not a cover I mean. story. Darn it. <laughs> I order the foie gras terrine with Make it up. the. I don't even know what that is. Sure, that was fine. All right, thanks. That was great. Um, wait, how do you separate the voices you played from your voice as an author? Mm. Uh, I think if I if I understand correctly, I think uh, finding your author voice is um, is an ever evolving thing. One of my favorite parts of when I get to write fiction and dialogue is I get to play all the characters mm -hmm. and and I get to not play me. Um, 
that's really fun for me. Um, you know, I just wrote something, it's a child prod prodigy piano player in high school, and there's her, there's the sort of mean uh, valedictorian guy who I envisioned as like a young Trump. And <laughs> like, he, like he just, you know, kind of a business, like he's just focused on the politics and, the, and business and the future and like doesn't care, you know, kind of. That was really, oh. what? He's focused on toupees, toupees. Toupees. Yeah. Um And, you know, I got to be her parents. I got to be the guidance counselor who I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if, like you see these guidance counselors who are like, just the greatest people. I was like, what if it's his first day and he doesn't really have any answers for her <laughs> either? And you know, stuff like, it just, it's most fun for me to, um, especially little characters, because when I first started, I was always, you know, auditioning for like, hey, who who needs water? <laughs> like, like the most boring, like no, I there's no, water, sure. there's no, that worked. It there's no character it. in it, you know? And so I always try, even if some, even if a character is like a tiny bit of real estate, uh, to give them something, to give them a little color, a little, I always think like if, if I was the actor coming in, mm -hmm. you know, with four lines, can it just be, you know, you, there's a feeling of a person there. Juicy. Um, so, and then, you know, when I wrote the essays, I just really tried to write it as I would speak it, which isn't the most writerly kind of approach, but I thought for such a talky kind of book where I just wanted to tell stories, you know, that was That's kind one of, of the most amazing things to me about you is how you're able to write and it really feels like you're hanging out with it's really that's what it's like when you read these books it's you're so able to be so honest and present it's it's amazing to me that you're able to translate your actual voice onto the page good job thank you very much moving on <laughs> um okay you mentioned starting a book club what books are you currently reading or what are your favorites um i'm always reading like four books at the same time and um, I've read every single, and when I'm writing, I like to read books that I could never write and have nothing to do with anything that I do. So I've read every book that starts with The Woman in Cabin tw Oh, I love that one. Or whatever. That was like, a great one. The, the Woman in the Window, The Woman in the, on the, train. the Girl on the Train Window, <laughs> like all those. <laughs> Um, because I, I uh, think one of my great weaknesses as a writer is construction and plot, and those books are, that's what they are. And so I'm, I'm even the crappiest one, I'm like, wow, how did they think of that? <laughs> so cool. And then it's the guy who did it, who that blows my mind. So I like, I like, I like, I like like a thriller, like a mystery or Stephen King. I read a lot of Stephen King. Um, I'm reading The Immortalists right now. I'm reading um, uh, and any of my friends' books. You know, I just like got to know Jenny Han, and I read uh, her uh, first first book. Jenny, no. oh. sleep. <laughs> Oh boy, this is going so um, well. And now I get to, it's one of the accomplishments I'm most proud of is, um, which has just kind of happened to me this year. So I have this incredible editor, Jen Smith, who really is responsible for um, this cool concurrent career I'm, I'm having, who is uh, an extremely pleasant taskmaster, which I think is such a like feat to pull off, the combination of like, get it done, but still smiling. Like she's so <laughs> encouraging and positive and helpful. And, um, and I get invited now to write with her sometimes and um, with Jenny Han, and I feel really cool. Oh my God, <laughs> so jealous. Um, oh, Amber. Mm. Martinez wants to know, when you're writing more than one project at a time, do they ever influence each other? Uh, yes, yes and no. I mean, I, one thing that's fun about working on more than one thing at a time is if you get tired of something, if you get tired of yourself in one vein, <laughs> you can go somewhere else. Mm. And, I, and I actually find that really helpful to like, you hit a wall, it's frustrating, work on something else for a while. And in fact, that's part of the Don Roos um, kitchen timer thing. I really love is, this a lot. Um, which is in uh, my last book, um, which is just a, a method of working um, and uh, says, 
if you if you can't if you're stuck on the project you're working on, you can go work on something else, but you can't like get up and make a phone call. You know, right. you have to like be kind of switching back and forth. Um, do you feel that so-called low-stakes storytelling receives the respect and recognition it deserves from industry voters? No, I don't. <laughs> um, do you know what she means by this? I didn't even hear you talk so fast. Oh. It's like friggin' Gilmore Girls in here, am I right? Hey, oh. <laughs> come on. So I think this is sort of what I was talking about um, in terms of Gilmore Girls being a not, not a, or, sub, or even Parenthood, like it's not an event-driven show. It's not Homeland. It's not the Americans. No one's a spy that we know yeah, of. Yeah, you don't know that. Um, <laughs> and I do think that it's not like to industry, whoever they are, it doesn't feel as sexy sometimes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get the kind of attention of like a higher premise show, but. Uh, I have a question. If, yeah. you, if you thought somebody on Parenthood, one of the characters on Parenthood was a spy, <laughs> who do you think it would be? Obviously Bonnie Bedelia. Obviously Bonnie <laughs> Bedelia. She's so warm and cozy and Oh, cuddly. she went to Italy. Oh, mm. sure, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, good call. I was gonna say Miles. I was gonna say Drew. Oh. Weirdly. Just because he's like quiet and like internal. He's probably reporting everything back to oh, the friggin' back headquarters. To the home back to the big boy upstairs. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. He lives in it my house. It definitely is scared not, of him. I know. Well, well. How about our little Miles? Can he's you like believe Miles? Thirteen Reasons Why. What a cool guy. Can you believe we no, still I got love him so much? It's my turn. Shh, shh. For Lauren. <laughs> what is your favorite bookstore in New York City? Oh. Um, and what, Jackson. in what sections do you spend a lot of the time mm. pursuing the books? Mm. Also, do you know how amazing, talented, hilarious, and a plethora of other adjectives you are? <laughs> That's from Lori. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Um, yeah, it's McNally Jackson. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in LA, it's Skylight, because there are neighborhood indie, and there's so few of them anymore. Um, I always like to see what the staff recommendations are. Mm. I um, I am intrigued when I when I did my first book. I would look for it in the regular section, and sometimes it was there, and sometimes it was in romance, Ew. which I was like, it's just a funny uh, distinction. I feel like that again just gets my like woman stuff up. Yeah, totally. Where I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, why you gotta call it like romance? A woman it's just wrote a it, book. so it's romance. Well, also, it's like, like isn't there romance in so many things? And it, it just felt, it feels sometimes to me. First of all, I think in these giant bookstores, they're just trying to help you differentiate, you know, what your interests might be. But I don't know. No, it I don't, doesn't I don't work like for it. me. Anyway, <laughs> um, my dad is 63. He's a blue collar worker and he drinks Budweiser, and he loves Gilmore Girls. This is not technically a question, but... But I love thank it. You. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Me, by the way, old lady Jackson needs her reading glasses. I'm like she worried over there. You're struggling. Okay, uh, <laughs> for Lauren and May, what are you currently Netflixing? Oh. From Taylor Randolph. I just finished Wild Wild Country. Me too. So did you. Yeah. Wow. Wild Wild Country was great. So insanely um, stressful. Do you know what I... Can't believe I hadn't seen already uh, from, but it's Amazon. Is Fleabag? Have you guys seen Fleabag? <laughs> so good. I haven't seen it yet. I and now that I've told you this, I can't steal her device, which I love. Which is she's the only one who does asides to the camera. It's not. It's sort of. If you haven't seen it, it's it's almost she's in her own kind of documentary. Like she's including you by breaking the fourth wall, but none of the other characters do it. Um, which I just, for that storytelling just works so well, but I think her writing's really fantastic. And also she's a great actor. Mm. Let's just quietly read the questions. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is a good one. That's oh. a great one, yeah. What else yeah. do we have here? Um, do you have a good one? Oh, I'll just throw this in there while we okay. were looking for one. Uh, what are your Hogwarts houses from Juliana? I'm <laughs> obviously Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Uh, I'm not sure if you know what that means. You're like, uh, snuggle pop. <laughs> no clue. I want to say you're like Ravenclaw, just because you're so smart, yeah, don't you think? Totally, I totally 100%. am. <laughs> it's really um, Jen Smith is always mad that I haven't read all the Harry Potters, and I'm now, mad too. now the joke's on me. Here's one: <laughs> How many cups of coffee do you think you drank on the set of Gilmore Girls? <laughs> That's from Natalie, age 13. Oh, Natalie. Natalie. Um, <laughs> a lot, probably too much. I. I, I, was, I had a cold a couple weeks ago, and I was like, maybe I drink tea. I think I'm going to switch to tea. And then I was like, ugh, tea's gross. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, uh, it is, I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't this read your hand. Such a nice long. I just don't. Know. Oh, here's oh. one. This is kind of fun. Uh, if you could play any of each other's past roles, which oh. would you choose? Ooh. Thanks, Allie. Such a fun question. I mean, you were so little. What? Who could I be? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you were so young and in, in all. I mean, oh, I would like to have been the Duff for sure. Oh yeah, totally. You would have been a great Duff. I mean, imagine if I, I had still. Like, any other fucking, oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, love you guys. If I imagine if I wanted to do anything other than play Lorelei, but I never could because I can't, my brain just is so slow. Yes, it's you the could, slowest sure. brain. You could do it. It would be like the longest TV series ever. I'd be like, <laughs> well, Rory, it's funny you say that. Like, so do not, not, non existent. Definitely not a thing. That should be on our podcast. That yeah. Doesn't exist. It's going to be on our non existent podcast. Our podcast might be called Kids Today. What do you think? What do you think? Do you guys have any suggestions? Old I mean, Lady there's Jackson. definitely going to be a segment of Old Lady Jackson. Old Lady Jackson it's has her happen. own segment. Also, book club. Yeah. It's really. Um, what gave you the confidence to take on writing as an actor? Honestly, almost nothing I've ever done did I have the confidence to do. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I, I I still can't believe I don't I don't even believe I'm sitting here. Like I, I, but I've gotten so used to that, like that I just ignore it. Like I I I still feel um, it's a fair amount of anxiety in in starting to pursue anything, and after a while, I kind of was like, well, that's stupid because I'm gonna rob myself of trying things and who cares if I don't, who cares if I'm not as good as I want to be, maybe I'll learn, maybe I'll get better. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I, I did not have confidence, I just had drive and that has gotten me down the road, you right. know what I mean? And, and like I, I think if you wait for your self esteem to catch up, you might be waiting a long time. So I just try to put my focus in work. Like, if I just, the more I'm talking myself out of something, the more I just need to shut that off and write some pages and, and just get to work. Mm -hmm. That sounded kind of serious and Can you, are stern. you okay? Do you, hand me the small writing ones. I can't read anything. I know. Okay, here's one that I just think is really fun. Hi, Lauren. Wish Hi. I had something to ask that has more substance, but I've been looking for the perfect bell sleeve dress, and where did you get yours? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> that's from Rachel. <laughs> this is um, a company called ALC, and I got it at Barney's. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Oh, here, what was it like working with Larry David? Oh my God, <laughs> so cool. I love Larry David so much. In a weird way, he reminds me of my dad, which I know sounds creepy, <laughs> but um, my father, that's my father's sense of humor. Kind of, he's, oh, my father's always really um, harping on about like really little things. Um, I am occasionally in a poker game and I'm the worst poker player. Like I, it, it's a part of my brain that I, I go into like an anxiety state that's like, I'm like, is three of a kind, is that better or worse than four of a kind? Is that three of a kind? Like I, I just can't keep it straight in my, in my mind. And it's so frustrating and so we play and he's a very good poker player and he always wins, which like the richest person walks away with the money because it's a <laughs> game for money, like they're not kidding around. Wow. And um, so I had played in this game a couple times and um, in the absence of skill, I try to be entertaining at these at these um, dinners, and but I never knew. Like I was always like, you know, Larry's like one of those people where you're like, you go, you drive home in the car, and you're like, does he, does Larry like me? Does he totally. think about me? Does he think I'm funny? Does he think I'm trying to be funny? Does he think I'm trying too hard? And like, um, so I never kind of knew. And then he called me. And he said, I got, a, I got a part for you on the show. By the way, my Larry David and my Ray Romano, very it's close. It's really too similar. Pretty much the same Yeah, the same You could impression. put a little more frogginess into the Ray. I feel in, like they would be oh, like, a, you know, yeah. it's kind of like. You do that better. Uh, I can't I don't know, Lauren. They, they all just have. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm working on it. It'll be better. They all just have New York accents. Yeah. That's all I do. <laughs> but he said, it's, it's very dirty. And I said, that's okay, I don't care. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, how dirty, like what do you mean? And he's like, he's like, well, you know, it's pretty dirty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> and, um, it sounded and just like him, by the way. <laughs> it's right. probably, it's sort of, that's the only, that's again, that's my only impression. <laughs> um, 
And then I got there on the first day, and it's we're having our first date, and I went like beet red, and 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 they were like, so just say you know some like the dirtiest, grossest, like most sexual things you can think of, and I was like, <laughs> um, really, <laughs> so salad, huh? <laughs> Literally, I couldn't think of anything, <laughs> anything. And they had to feed me, so they're screaming because it's oh all improvised. God. You get like a, you get like so an worse. outline. This is my dream kind of job. <laughs> like you get an outline, and then you just make up all the dialogue, and it's so much fun. But when it came to any of the dirty stuff, and then the poor producers, like I don't, I can't even I, repeat can't. any no, of the stuff can't. that I said because it's too so jarring. Worse. He was like, he'd yell stuff out, and I'd be like, yeah. So anyway, the <laughs> like I was so, <laughs> and, and and then we had this scene with Ted Danson and all the people at the at the dinner table, and I had to do it again. And this is like days later, and Ted was like, ooh, I can't wait to hear what you're gonna come oh up with. And I literally, I, I, and I think this is what they used, I was like, oh, I went out with this guy, and he left cracker crumbs in the bed. Oh, no. He was dirty, and we, what they is this, called 1950? Cut. Exactly. <laughs> And Ted, Ted was like, Ted was like, you know, with HBO, you can, you can really <laughs> <laughs> let loose. And I was like, oh no, Ted, that was me That's letting loose. And he was like, aw, it's like, aw, poor thing. So anyway, besides yeah. that, it was, I had like the time of my life, and it, wow. I, I loved, I loved them so much. I wish that was like my regular job. Um, how long did it take you to sign all those books? <laughs> I signed all these books. First of all. I flew in last night. I got here at five in the morning nice. and s was confused, made popcorn, slept for a couple hours, and then came here. And so what did that take us? Two hours to sign? Us, as if May, May signed like, some of them. Trying, it's fine. It's fine, right? I mean, it's still cool, right? It's still technically Lauren adjacent. It's fine. Come on. So it takes like, I, I can do like a couple hundred books in an hour. Mm -hmm. But oh, here's something. Some, if my uh, signature starts getting really crummy, <laughs> then I put a heart on your book, because I feel bad. <laughs> and also, also on the first books and the last books, I do like a little doodle. So you either have my hand cramp or first or last books, if you have a, if you have a little heart. Oh my god, this one's funny. Uh, hey Lauren and May, when will you reprise your roles as Hamilton rappers? Michelle oh my from god. Michelle. Mine never Can really we made it. tell you the story of what happened that day? That was like the best. Yeah, what just that process. I had never seen Hamilton. And Lauren was like, no, 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 we have to do the challenge. Like, we have to do it. And I was like, right, but I t I've never done it. And so Lauren had to, like, force feed me, like, teach me the words of this song. And I only learned, like, the first 20 seconds of it. Yeah. And I remember we had just gone hiking. And we right. were, like, driving through the Dirty. mountains. Yeah. And, yeah, like, disgusting singing and a bad Hamilton hat. Singing over and yeah, over singing and over. Yeah, singing over and over and over. And you were like, no, 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 she has, has, says it more like this. Like, this is the situation. And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, OK, I'm trying. And then and we literally did it, like, I, like. We did it, like, 50 times. Actually, you probably still have it on your phone. I'm and sure. then I I did the entire song of the of King George. Yeah. Um, which is my favorite song. But and then and then I was too embarrassed to put it on the internet. It's really good. Maybe someday we someday, someday maybe, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, how's our time? Are you bored? We're still we stop. Yeah. Okay. We have a couple, we have a few minutes left. Um, some of these I can't. Here's one. Can't. Lauren Graham. Yes. How does it feel to see Mae Whitman, me, your TV you. daughter? in case you forgot who she is, yeah. uh, playing a mom on oh. TV now from oh. Rachel. I love it. First of all, it's so much fun when the people you love are not in your TV show. <laughs> because I can't stand to watch myself, and it's, and it's a harrowing experience every time. So now I have Peter in a show that's harrowing, but not because I'm in it. And, <laughs> and so I can watch that. Although when the tapeworm came out of the guy, I was like this. <laughs> I can't do it. I literally, Ugh. when they're like, they're cutting babies out of the I can't, pipes, I, I was can't. like, <gasps> but it's very traumatic for me. How, how heroic and wonderful is oh Bobby Nash? Oh, God, he's beyond. I've never I seen anything like that. I love seeing him in that, and he has so much fun. He loves being a fireman, and he loves, the, like, the, the, his cast members call him captain in real life, and, that's like, he loves it. He, it's so much fun. So that's really fun for me to see, and it is a joy to see you in you know. Good Girls, and I think you're a fantastic mom. Thanks, guys. But, you know, the worst, the worst part of it is that I, everything I really, I mean, yes, I had, other TV, or other, not really TV moms, but other moms growing up as a child, but none so much. You know, the, one of my favorite things about our family relationship was that we'd all, we all sort of helped each other grow up, and I feel like a lot of the other family units on that show were much more like defined parents and kids, and I feel mm. like 
our family unit was just like we were all best friends and mm -hmm. told each other everything and went through everything together and it was so intimate and now being on Good Girls with Izzy, it's kind of a similar situation where it's honestly, I draw a lot of it from Gilmore Girls because it's a similar situation where I had a child so young mm -hmm. and we sort of helped each other grow up. But I mean, everything I learned, I learned from you. I'm moving stop, on. Stop, stop. I can't, can't do it. Can me, pass it to me. <laughs> um, what, one thing that I, oh. One, call. Stop, oh, got stop it. talking. It's, yeah, stop be talking. quiet. Is it's that what it two says? more questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> try to look around for something. Let the people go home. Yeah, is everyone the is note card depressed. Got. And um, one thing that I have more appreciation for, and and I definitely had it on Parenthood because I was an actual age where you could be my child, as upsetting as that is. <laughs> and and on Gilmore Girls, we were really more, we were genuinely closer in age. But it it is an incredible gift to be able to work with a young actor and kind of give them your experience, stop, give them your experience, <laughs> your experience and you're, you really are kind of a, a, a parent figure and it's, it's a really important job and you're doing an incredible thing for that little girl and she is lucky to have you. It's so good. <laughs> okay, we can't do this. Uh, here's a question. Would you ever consider doing another Broadway show? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, but I don't know what it is. I mean, that was, boy, is that hard work. Golly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what it would be. But I, I, there's no more powerful experience than the theater to me still. It's just my favorite thing. And, um, and I would love to be part of that. Again, it doesn't have to be Broadway. I just would love to do... I would love to be an oldie actor who just does plays and musicals. Like that's because you know TV. After a while, you're like, oh, my face, and then I don't, <laughs> I don't want to like chop it all up, and you know, you know. So yeah, <laughs> I feel like those are my. That's those are your questions. Yeah. Do you oh, have but any how last about, one don't we feel do? bad about this? Yeah, you stack? really slacked off. I did my job, guys. I did everything I could to get these all out. Um. 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 I mean, we could talk about what what Rory lover you prefer, but I don't know if that's like too stressful. Please, I can't. She couldn't. She can never. <laughs> I'm really like asking. This is like hardball with Chris Matthews or something. I'm like asking <laughs> all the tough questions over here. Uh, uh, oh, I like this. Um, what do you do? How do you combat the fear that your stories may only live on your computer? What can a young writer do to keep pushing through those hard days? Molly. Um, <laughs> I, th I realized something that um, I think is a nice place to perhaps end, which is uh, I had a real aversion to um, having the idea of a, of a mentor or of asking for feedback or help. I was an only child for most of my life. I really pr uh, took a lot of pride in being independent and, and I, never want to, I never want to ask for help. I, when Peter directed me on Parenthood, it was like a joke where he'd start to talk to me. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, 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 I got it. Like, I'm a real, like, you know, I'll, I, I, I'll do it myself, I'll do it myself. You don't have to tell me, you don't have to tell me. And, and as a writer, I have gotten so much from the people I admire, from mentors, from gods, from teachers, and people have so much to share. There's so many people who are older, better, more experienced, and now I'm like a junkie for just picking somebody's brain. You know, I love to just hear what someone else's process is, and I and I get so much out of um, out of you know continuing to find kind of guides and teachers and, and uh, it helps keep you always learning and growing and, and um, so don't be afraid to ask for, for help. Yeah, and you even said in the book something I thought that really resonated with me was even when you take a step out there and you make a mistake, it ends up opening doors that never would have been opened otherwise. Yeah. And you can end up taking away a lot more from the experience even if it had gone more. It's smoothly. really, the book could also have been called Don't Be Afraid to Suck. <laughs> I like that. Who cares? Like, who cares? Yeah, Just who cares? Finish your story, show it to 50 people. Maybe you'll get one helpful feedback. Just, it's, you know, don't be hard on yourself. It's like, you're just here to create and enjoy life and uh, just get as much as you can from this world and from each other and just keep, keep reaching out and keep 
creating beautiful things is we, we, we need it. In conclusion, don't worry about it. In conclusion, don't I worry. I just have to say Thank you.